Happy Tuesday, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Um, happy, hey, we're, we're in another world of COVID uh, with Omicron. And uh, I, I'm with all of you as we navigate this ongoing new chapter of COVID. Sometimes I say, I, what's the post-pandemic world going to look like? And I'm like, oh, wait, we're still in the pandemic world. So I do, uh, I, you know, I try to find some levity in it. And, uh, um, but I also want to acknowledge that I know it's been painful for many of us. Um, and uh, I hope that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy and well. Um, so uh, welcome to Hummingbird Hour. Uh, which is our um, conversation series uh, where we amplify the voices of others, um, amplifies the, amplify the voices of the unheard um, to um, and share wonderful stories and, uh, and bring conversations uh, to all of you um, that will hopefully help us learn and grow and um, make the world a better place for everyone and particularly make workplaces better for everyone. <laughs> so I am delighted to, to welcome LaTanya Wilkins as our guest today. Uh, LaTanya and I met last year and had, uh, uh, through a mutual friend, um, actually I think we met, may have met through uh, Bernadette Smith, who was uh, my last guest on Hummingbird Hour before the holiday season. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll come back to Bernadette here in a few minutes because I wanna make sure I, I talk about Bernadette's book as well for a minute. But uh, LaTanya has also written a book uh, leading below the surface. So we're going to talk a bit about this book and how we can build psychologically safe relationships with, with people that are different than us. Um, so I'm delighted that uh, Latanya is here with us today. So I'm going to stop the sharing now and um, talk a little bit more about um, Latanya and the, 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 the and Bernadette. But uh, Latanya, I want to give you a chance to say hello. Hi, it's uh, great to see everyone and it's great to be here with you. I actually think we were introduced through Jennifer Brown. Oh, Jennifer Maybe Bernadette, Bernadette came later. I think it was her. Um, Cause I, I remember having a phone call with her in what, 2019? And then maybe, or 2020, yeah, maybe it was 2019 or 2020. And, and then I think Bernadette, I think we figured out that we both know Bernadette who just wrote, wrote a book called uh, inclusive 360. And so, yeah, so she's also a local Chicagoan. So we're all, we, 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 we throw up the visuals here. So uh, <laughs> the 360, uh, so proven solutions for an equitable organization. So if you're looking for some, some great reading, um, inclusive 360, 360 is a great one. Um, and I love that we're doing the, uh, the name dropping of, uh, it was Jennifer Brown who introduced us. She's one of our celebrity uh, DEI colleagues. Um, and, uh, and I know for me, uh, uh, Jennifer was such a big advocate um, for, um, <clears throat> for me as I made this step into the, the world of uh, DEI. She um, really was a mentor for me. Her, her team at Jennifer Brown Consulting they um, they did a lot to help me learn and grow, and actually were one of my. Um, they worked with me as a as a vendor partner when I was at Tapestry, which was my my last in house role in uh, corporate life. So uh, so really a big fan and grateful for the work that Jennifer done and the time that Jennifer gave me and the work that the Jennifer Brown team does. And I know that's actually true for Jennifer and for a lot of people. So yes, she is a she is a celebrity name in some ways in the DEI space, but she does a lot to support others. How how did you meet Jennifer? Um, I met her through, I think, uh, my publisher, so PYP Press, and uh, so I did a, uh, a similar kind of uh, interview, like chat, like video chat with her and uh, Jen, and then um, me and uh, Jennifer ended up having a chat after that, and um, it was when I was, I remember it was when I was uh, starting, I think I'd been like year one or year two in my business. And so we chatted and yeah, it was, it was a nice chat. We, we didn't really, it was kind of a personal chat. It was nice. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't really know much uh, of her until we met. And so it was great to, to um, just hear about the business she built and, and all of that as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, and I cannot think of the name of that uh, conversation. They, they invited me to join as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, uh, so for those of you who are uh, listening or watching, um, uh, we're, we're talking about Jennifer Brown, who's a DEI diversity, equity, and inclusion leader and um, thought leader and someone who is really um, has really made a difference in my career and someone where Latanya and I are both fortunate to know. And Jen T. Grace, uh, who is also a, a mutual friend of ours, who is the founder of Publish Your, Pur Publish Your Purpose Press, uh, which is a... Um, uh, hybrid publishing um, business that focuses on um, similar to the, this, the commitment uh, that we have at Hummingbird of amplifying the voices of the unheard and uh, bringing to, to the to bookshelves and to readers around the world stories that um, haven't been told yet and need to be told. So, um, so I'm glad that you got to work with the Publish Your Purpose team. I actually did their their workshop to learn about writing a book. Um, mm -hmm. And as Latanya knows, uh, I am, uh, and some of you may have heard, I, I wrote a book too. Um, and uh, Jen T. Grace and Publisher Purpose Press played a, played a role in, in my journey in um, writing that book. Uh, and I learned a lot from Jennifer, um, or from Jen, <laughs> um, Jen at PYP, and from Jennifer Brown, of course, as well. So um, I'm grateful to, to that they're both, that we both had a chance to cross paths and that we got introduced through, mm -hmm. through Jennifer. Yeah. Around and and we find of course oh, this is a small world yeah. and we have lots of friends in common so yeah. so I have to know why well actually before we dive into about the book um I you know I skipped the Brian Bree and the bio portion of this so Latana do you want to just share a little bit about who you are and yeah you absolutely yeah I won't bore you with a long introduction so uh, I'm Latanya I run a company called Change Coaches. And we work with organizations to create cultures of belonging through coaching and uh, workshops and also customated, customize what we call culture academies. So that's like the corporate side of the business. And then I also uh, run a speaking uh, business as well um, under the latanyawilkins.com name. I also run some, uh, one. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching through that latanyawilkins.com name, executive coach. And, credential executive coaching under that as well. And then I am an author of a book called Leading Below the Surface, How to Build Real and Psychologically Safe Relationships with People Who Are Different from You. Thank you, Ryan. I have all these, these tabs here because um, this is actually the final proof of my book that I had gotten uh, in the mail uh, before I actually opened the book up live for book sales. So these are like my, my final changes um, and, and some of these changes probably were a little bit obsessive, but uh, that's, the, that's the story behind this book. Um, so right now, I would say I'm spending most of my time on uh, being an author, promoting my book, uh, doing a lot of keynotes uh, with companies, larger companies, smaller companies, and um, also coaching a lot of companies. I'm really excited about uh, 2022. I think a lot of organizations are ready to uh, take a deep look at their cultures. And that's what we help people do. Um, there's been a lot of surface things that have happened over like the last year or so. Um, and we're here to, to help companies get deeper. So that's a little bit about me. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing. And uh, I, you know, I love that. Um, and what I, there's so many things I love. And I, as you know, I love the message in the book, but I want to just acknowledge the, uh, this gig economy that we have all like live in now, um, where we're like, okay, so here's my speaker hat. Okay, and I'm gonna have my coach hat. Now I'm gonna have my consultant hat. We all put on lots of different different hats, um, and uh, I, you know, I know I find it rewarding because it gives me a chance to to do a variety of different things that I'm passionate and excited about while while trying to make a difference. Uh, I know that before we we came we. Uh, uh, we went live, you and I were talking about the, the reality of the, the world that we're all faced with today mm -hmm. um, and navigating this, uh, this pandemic and COVID and uh, the Omicron resurgence of the, the virus, which is impacting so many people. How, how have you just navigated the, this last two years as a human? Yeah, so that's a a really interesting question. I mean, it, it started, I, I, I would say that in 2020, um, the early 2020, I still had a full-time job. Um, although I was doing a lot of speaking, I was doing a lot of coaching, I was writing the book. Um, 
I, I'd started kind of writing it mentally in my head, but I, I had nothing on paper. Uh, March of 2020, I did two keynotes. Um, and then those were the last keynotes I did in person uh, uh, until what? December of 2021. I think I, like I said, I think I had a few in last month. Um, and so how have I been navigating this? Well, my life has changed a lot uh, with this pandemic. And uh, I, I, like, like others, I also had a great realization and through that great realization, uh, I ended up uh, going part-time with my job. And then that ended up, uh, now I'm completely on my own. I ended up writing a book. Uh, I ended up, uh, I had already been accustomed to doing things from home uh, on Zoom. And I'm, I have a really strong um, instructional design and leadership development background. So I've, I've had to facilitate online for many years now. So it wasn't like a huge change for me. Um, but now I will say that I'm excited uh, to get back on the road. Um, I think with when you are a keynote speaker, um, like for me, I, I get my energy from my audience. And so I'm really excited to, to get back out there. But the last thing I'll, I'll leave this with is that I have all the shots. I think I'm getting my last shot, uh, my booster on uh, Thursday. And then you just gotta live with this. Brian, you said something earlier about post-pandemic world. I don't know if that exists. I think that this is gonna be, this is gonna be um, the future. Um, and I am a climatologist, I should say self-proclaimed. I mean, I don't have the degrees to match. You'll have a new certification. Global, yeah, but global <laughs> warming is coming and our world's gonna change. And this is what it's gonna look like. There's gonna be things that happen that you're gonna say, wait, we didn't have to do this like five years ago. Well, the, I'm telling you, the world's gonna continue to change. and the pandemic is is part of that. And I, I think it's just the beginning of what we're gonna see in the future um, where our lives are gonna be different and that's not gonna be determined by us. It's gonna be determined by the planet. Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, and uh, I saw, actually I saw one of the headlines uh, that crossed my, um, my, you know, my news app this morning was, uh, and I'm going to get, I, I'm going to mention two numbers because I don't know, rem remember which one it was, but it was something, it was either 10 or 20 that in the, the last year, the United States had, it was either 10 or 20, $1 billion climate disasters in the last year. Yeah. Yeah. It's just pick it up. This is our world. This is, this is what we all live with. Yeah. And uh, well, the, uh, uh, you know, again, as I said earlier, for, for just during my opening comments, um, I, I keep wanting to believe that there's a, going to be a post pandemic world, but I, I fully agree with Latanya with what you've just shared that it is, it is not there's post isn't a reality. It is part of just who we are and how we live today. And uh you know, one thing I, I loved, uh, and again, for those of you, you know, who are with us, I, I certainly hope um, that you are safe and well and that your loved ones are safe and well. And if you're able to, I highly encourage you to get vaccinated. I too have all three shots. Um, and it certainly has given me a lot of peace of mind to know that I have those shots and my mom and dad have those shots and my sister has those shots. So uh, I encourage you to get vaccinated. Um, you know, one thing that you started with though was it's a, it's interesting. I, I remember absolutely the, the last thing I did in person before the pandemic. Uh, I was in El Paso, Texas, uh, working with uh, the the queer community in El Paso um, and uh, um, and facilitating a conversation with community members about how can we create sp safe spaces. And that was actually with the Jennifer Brown consulting team. So I still remember that so vividly. And I have built a, an affinity with that that um, group of humans that I got to meet um, because we that was the last thing that many of us did together. And uh, I've, I've done one live event since then, which was this past uh, November in Anaheim. And it was such a joy to be in person again. So I, I hope that mm -hmm. we can all be together again in person. You know, something that we're, we're talking about right now, though, Latanya, we're, you know, reminds me of one of the core messages of your book here, we were, you know, again, there's something else we were talking about um, earlier is <laughs> this, uh, this reality that workplaces don't invite 
real conversation. Like, I think some of this conversation would, would not have happened in workplaces two years ago. We'd be like, no, we got, we have some Excel spreadsheets to, 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 to solve and some PowerPoint presentations to do. And we have some decisions to make, and we, we got to make sure that we're hitting the bottom line. And the reality is humans are really impacted by what's happening in the world around us. Um, and we've been talking about the pandemic, but there are so many aspects of who we are as humans that, um, that we, we can't, put those things in the drawer when we walk into the office or, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the, the analogy that I, I, I share a lot with uh, when I'm delivering, uh, you know, speeches or keynotes uh, or training, even training sessions is, I, you know, I remember 20 years ago when I, um, you know, 20 plus years ago, when I walked into my first corporate job, nobody told me, Hey, take that coat off, which is, which I did is represents your emotions and hang it up. But I knew I was supposed to hang up my emotions. Um, mm -hmm. And I knew I was supposed to put on the blue suit and the red tie and the white button down shirt and just go and be that robot human that fits the box. But that isn't, that, that doesn't work for real people. So tell me, I, like, I, I know you, I will let you sort of dive into this, but I know that that's, that's a core part of what you talk about in your book. Yeah, it's so interesting that you brought that up. So, um, you know, it's funny. I was in a conversation uh, with someone yesterday, and this is someone that I've coached in the past. And this is like a, he's he's like a high potential uh, person in this large corporation. And he's doing really well. He's got his first global assignment. And um, in my book, I, I talk about, he just read my book. And in my book, I talk about, below the surface leaders. So I talk about different levels of leadership. I talk about, um, I talk about uh, surface leaders, which are kind of what you're talking about, Brian, with, hey, don't share anything. Don't bring any conversations to work. You know, we are gonna be stuck in the dominant leadership standards, right? Of let's muscle up, let's be merit meritocratic, all those types of things. Then we have transitional leaders that are kind of in the middle. And then we have below the surface leaders. And that's what I talk about a lot in the book. And these are leaders, you know, I talk about the three prongs, um, real leadership, relatable, equitable, aware, and loyal. I talk about empathetic leadership um, and empathetic listening to be able to connect with people. And then I talk about psychological safety and how do we get deeper in psychological safety and actually build that. Um, this person had read the book and he said, hey, is the goal for everyone to be a below the surface leader? Like, are you saying that I have to be a below the surface leader? And as a coach, I threw that question back at him and I said, what kind of a leader do you want to be? Or what kind of leader do you think you need to be? And he said to me, and this, this shows us how trapped we are in this dominant leadership standard that I talk about in my book. He said, well, you know, sometimes you need to be surface because sometimes you have to tell it how it is. And sometimes people don't, don't want to get squishy. And sometimes, and I said, okay. So he's like, so I want to be transitional. And you know what I said to him? I said, okay, I want you to read the rest of the book and I want to see if you change your mind. Because um, what I'm hearing is that when you're reading about below the surface leadership, you're thinking it's squishy, you're thinking it's, it's um, overcompensating, but you wouldn't know what those people wanted if you didn't get below the surface. If those people that did want to stay at that level, um, if, if you did have those people, on your team, you wouldn't even know it. You wouldn't know how to create psychological safe relationships with them. You wouldn't know how to work with them if you didn't become a below the surface leader. And so I, yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. And I think we are so caught in that way of thinking that we sort of defend our way back into it. Like, Latanya, you're, there's no way, like, how are we all going to be below the surface? Then it's just going to be a workplace full of emotions and people are gonna be uncomfortable, but that's not what this is. What this is, is you're able to connect enough so you can create that environment that for everyone, that especially for people who are different from you. So yes, I agree. Um, and I think that this is going to be something that is, we're gonna be working on for years to change. I'm seeing a lot of it, especially with uh, remote work um, and clients and it's like, we're supposed to be talking about creating cultures of belonging, but we get stuck when there's these, these um, conflicts around, well, people need to come to the office or they need to stay home. Or again, like getting below the surface, like getting below the surface and understanding 
how people want to work. That doesn't mean that you have to accommodate it, but getting below the surface with them first and then being able to understand that and work with them, but you can't do that unless you get below the surface, right? So yes, I, I do agree with what you said. Yeah, um, you know, I, well, thank you for sharing the 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 story about um, about your the coaching client and also just the the example of this this fear because um, because we have we use a similar philosophy at Hummingbird um, and which is uh, and we do this exercise that, that using the human iceberg and it's called Who Am I um, and uh, uh, we ask people to, to we, we share the iceberg of invisible and invisible, visible and invisible identities. We ask them, the participants to write down those identities and to think about how their identities shape how they see the world um, or how they show up every day. And then we just ask people to share stories about how their identities shape their perspective um, and whatever they're comfortable with. We don't make you know people share things they're not ready to share. <clears throat> and um, it's all in the spirit of what you're talking about is, Let's know each other as humans to, first before we do the work that we do that we need to do together. And if we understand each other as humans, we can see each other as humans. The work can actually be better and more, and you can do more together. And um, and so that's where, where we where we start. What I I've ha had a couple conversations that I can think of uh, just right now with CEOs who are like, all that people are going to do is they're going to talk about how they feel about things, and I'm like. That's, that's <laughs> actually not going to happen. A, <laughs> we don't jump from here to here. <laughs> we usually jump from here to here. <laughs> yes, I'm like, okay, well, I I appreciate the fear. I, I, I If you just trust, just take the leap. You're going to find that it's not a big jump. You're going to like maybe go down a ledge and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to like, okay, this is going to feel, and it's actually going to feel better once you do it, but it's going to feel unfamiliar unfamiliar it's going to feel, feel uncomfortable it's going to feel different um and uh i actually one of my favorite moments uh, a couple months ago was uh, a leader and i were prepping for a session that i was facilitating <clears throat> and he said i want to do this i want to explain what happened and i want to like i want to uh, like rewrite like or go back and sort of revisit like the steps of what happened or what didn't happen i said we're going to do none of that actually <laughs> and he's like what? <laughs> and I said, we're not going to do that. We're just going to, we're going to go have a conversation with humans about how they felt about what, the, about leaving that room. And we're not going to try to agree what did or didn't happen in that space. And he said, that feels so uncomfortable. And my response was good. That means we're going to, we're doing something that is moving in the right direction. Um, right. In the session that, that, that we, that we came afterwards, like we came out of it, it was so powerful and he was grateful that he, he stepped into that discomfort, but it's hard. Do you find, I'm guessing you find that a lot with the, the people you work with that this stepping into the discomfort is because it's unfamiliar, this is not how we were mm -hmm. taught to show up at work together. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's hard. And so when I, in my book, I talk about uh, fallbacks and I talk about a bare minimum of and that being empathy, like I have a chapter called Living on the Edge with Empathy. And I think if you could just do one thing and just do empathy, just try empathy, just, and whatever, whatever the empathy is, it's like uh, person to person, you can do person to person listening, you can validate people, um, you can play things back, show people that you're listening, um, or a person of belonging listening, looking around, taking a step back, saying how well someone participates in the environment, how they participate, is someone dominating, is someone not, but taking a step back so you can actually acknowledge what's going on. But everybody, yeah, we need a fallback. And, and I think, it, like, again, empathy is accessible if you try um, to do it. Um, and even if you commit to empathy on a smaller scale, that's, that's where you start, right? Just find a place to start. And if you stop there, fine. Your leadership will probably be even 20 times better, right? Just from starting and stopping there and like mastering that. But everything that we're talking about today, you don't have to do it tomorrow, right? Um, just take take one fallback and it's and just see if that can get you on track. I love that. Well, I, I wanna um I wanna go back to that that what is that the title of that chapter is you said living on the edge with empathy, right? I think I marked this earlier. Is that right? Yes, yeah. What, what is living on the edge with empathy? Mm -hmm. what is, say, uh, say more about that. I, I, yeah. I'm, hearing, I'm hearing Bon Jovi in my head. Is that a, is that a Bon Jovi song? <laughs> living on the edge, right? Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, the reason why I, I talk about 
it, as living on the edge is exactly what the conversation we're talking about is that empathy has not been a very socially acceptable behavior um, at work. Um, it definitely is not even entirely socially acceptable at home. Like, I mean, you hear a lot of marriages and, and other intimate relationships breaking down because of the lack of, of empathy, the lack of uh, acknowledgement, right? And so when you're living on the edge, you're, you're, you're accepting that this might be a behavior that is not going to be accepted. And so you are on the edge. You're, you're having edgy thinking because other people in the org are going to, they might label you as being too soft, or they might label you as um, not being a real leader. And so that's why I call it that. I acknowledge exactly where we are today. Um, I know me and you talk about this. I know think tanks talk about it. But Brian, when I'm with my client, I will tell you, most organizations are not talking about this, especially in the trenches. And so that's why it's on the edge. Yeah, it is. It, it, it is really, it's different than just what the, how we defined our, our workplaces. And, uh, um, you know, I, I think that uh, it's, you know, it's something that we are at Hummingbird where we're practicing, how do we do that? Like, what does it look like for us? And what are the things that work and what, what don't, what does, don't work, what doesn't work? So we can share that with our clients. And, um, and so I know that, you know, that that's important as well of we're, we got to try new things. And sometimes we're going to try on something that's going to fit. And sometimes we're going to try on something and say, nope, that doesn't fit. We got to try something different. But that exploration is so important. Absolutely. So we've talked a little bit. So you've mentioned your the the real acronym. So that's relatable, equitable, aware, and loyal. Yes. Yep. Can you give us just a, a, a little bit more about those four words. Yeah. So uh, the reason why I dedicated a chapter to... Um, real leadership. And it's the chapter is called becoming a below the surface leader. And I take you through each of those qualities um, is because um, I spent a lot of time teaching uh, leadership classes. And uh, whenever I went into the libraries to get my books, and I tell this, I tell the story a lot. Um, there's all the authors of these leadership books were white, um, white men. And when you look at the top selling leadership books of all time. They're all white guys. And I'm not saying Franklin Covey hasn't helped us in some way, but that's pretty much all you see. And, th and that's, that's the dominant piece of, of what you see there. So I was fascinated. I still am fascinated with leadership archetypes and how um, leadership archetypes always focused on what we were as a leader, like what we focused on, but not how we led. So for example, um, you know, I've worked for a lot of different um, larger corporations, went through some corporate leadership programs, always had a leadership archetype assessment. And it usually was like, oh, you're strategic or you're innovative or, you know, you are what, whatever, like those types of things, creative, you're all these types of leaders. But um, never have I really had a lot of archetypes or seen any archetypes that focus on how we lead. Um, and that's like, some people are like, well, inclusive leadership, but that's not an archetype, right? That's something that we talk about as a descriptor, right? And so I did a lot of research and as I was doing this research um, and I, I, I looked at um, what makes leaders successful and what makes leaders um, empower their teams in a, in a more inclusive way. And this is what I came up with. It was the, the real acronym. And these are the things that a lot of le leaders are striving to do, but they're doing it off the side of their plate. So for example, being relatable, that means that you are um, relating to your staff in a way that works for them. So you're coming down to their, to their level, you're speaking their language, you, um, you're being more relatable in that fashion. For example, if one of your staff members have, like, for example, has children and you don't, you're being relatable to them, um, like around their children and, and vice versa, right? Like maybe you are accommodating them in some ways, right? You're being relatable to them in that way. Equitable, equity. We talk about equity a lot. And um, it drives me nuts because when leaders talk about equity, they talk about it as a separate thing. Like, oh, the DEI team's going to do this thing for us. No, you need, equity is a part of leadership. And so again, that's, that's what equity is. It's like, creating equitable um, team structures and systems. Aware is, is that you are always aware of how you are as a leader. You're aware of what you're good at, what you're not so good at. 
And loyal is one of the, my favorite parts of this. Um, as you know, um, psychological safety is a big part of my book. Amy Edmondson wrote my Ford, and um, loyal is, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with psychological safety. And what that means is that as leaders, um, we don't give up on our people too soon, right? We are loyal to the process. We are loyal to them. Um, you know, when, when someone new comes in, and I know a lot of you are hiring new people, especially um, in interest of diversifying your team, in interest of keeping up with the future of work that we're living in right now. And so you're going to hire people who are different from you and you have to be loyal to them so they can ramp up and be able to, to succeed in your organization. And this is a huge issue. Um, there's so many orgs that, and, and I work with a lot of tech companies, especially, and they have this prototypical way you're supposed to think or how fast you're supposed to succeed or all these things. And they're so quick to give up, but you have to give people time. And that's what, that, that's what I mean by loyal, um, loyal to people and also loyal to process of change. Mm. Yeah, you know, on that that last note, and I, of course, I could I could offer thoughts on all, all you know all four of those uh, those words and the descriptions, but on that loyal piece of the puzzle, you know, I think something that I worry about these today is uh, because our world um, and our workplaces uh, are immediate gratification driven. Uh, we want to be agile. We want to adjust quickly. There's an I think there's an expectation for people to perform and deliver faster and faster and faster than ever before, and that doesn't work for every human. Uh, it's just not realistic. And uh, you know, I I think about actually the the moments and, and and I you know I'm far from alone in telling this story of the moments I learned the most were the moments where I got something wrong, I messed up, I, you know, I failed at something and I had a, um, and, and uh, so that's, that you could just stop there or you could say, and the ones that allowed me to know that those, those experiences that allowed me to um, continue to try and to continue to, to take risks and, and to try new things were when I had leaders or managers who said, okay, let's figure out what happened and where you went wrong and let's learn from it and let's pick ourselves up and move forward. And, uh, and that's, a, that's a inherent in that loyalty equation. And if that, uh, if that, I think if that we're missing that loyalty, then, um, you know, then I think we're focusing on uh, the, the, you know, I, I could see, I could sort of envision humans living with fight, flight, or freeze all the time of like, wait, I don't know if I can, and this, this mm -hmm. goes in, I'm starting to talk about psychological safety of like, I, I'm in an environment where I know that someone is committed to me and my learning as an employee, and they're going to create space for me to make mistakes and to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's, uh, you know, um, I love what you're saying about that. There's, there's one person that told me, um, as a leader, what he does as an executive leader, he, he tells his team that he expects mistakes. Right. And so I think if the more and more we can talk about that, like where, um, it, it expect mistakes and that's how we learn. And then, and that's part of the messiness. It's not, it's not the quickest solution. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, accepting the journey, um, instead of just the, the results of that journey. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I want to make sure I just ask those of those of you who are with us today, um, uh, the if you have any questions, feel free to, to drop those in chat. Um, we are we're not going to try to 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 go to the full hour. Um, Latanya and I talked about this but just before the call and we said, you know what, we're all spending a lot of time on Zoom. So we want to give you back a few minutes of your day and, uh, and we're going to wrap up uh, a few minutes early, uh, but certainly want to make sure that we have a, a chance to, to invite any any questions uh, that, uh, that any of you may have who are with us today. Um, and if you're uh, if you are watching later, and I hope you're getting something out of this uh, at a later time, for those of you who are, are watching the, the replay, um, we certainly um, welcome, you can reach out to us via email and we'll come back to that of where to connect with Latanya and me um, uh, at the, here in a few minutes. So, you know, Latanya, I'm, I'm curious, what is the, as, as people have, you know, picked up your book and um, and, and, you know, and said, Hey, this is the part that resonated with me the most. Is there, is there a piece of this puzzle that, cause I, I know that we're living in a time right now where, 
Um, I, and I say I know, but I also hope that we're living in a time now where leaders and <clears throat> decision makers are paying attention to humanity in a way that they never have before, particularly humanity in the workplace. And I'm curious if there's a if there's a part of the book that's really like this is the part that's resonating the most. You mean with humanity in the workplace? Is that what oh, you're with, saying? Or with your, your with because your book is very much about humanity in the workplace um, and mm -hmm. some way to engage in that. So I'm curious if there's a part of that that's really connecting the most or, or resonating the most with people that are reading it. Sorry, can you repeat the question? I don't think I understand what you're, what that's you're okay. asking. Sometimes I make I make <laughs> sorry, <more> sorry. <laughs> I was trying to wing it, but I don't want to give you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is sometimes me. you just gotta ask. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. What, yeah. what is what is the thing you're hearing that like, people react to the most? What are what are you hearing? Oh most? yeah, in the book, yeah. yes. Yeah, so uh, I would say the stories. Um, okay. I tell. Um, a lot of stories um, that honestly were difficult to, to repeat and relive over and over. Um, and I think, like, I remember writing, like right after I wrote the book and released it, I remember uh, meeting with one of my clients uh, and it was an executive team and the CEO stayed behind um, and he wanted to give me some, some uh, feedback on my book and he said, um, you know, I really appreciate your stories. I know that was probably hard to share, but he's like, you know, no matter how many times people tell me what we need to do, or they tell me um, that people don't belong. He's like, I actually felt like I was there with you when you were telling me those stories. And when you were, when you were telling me the stories as, of when you were rejected as a black woman, as a queer woman, and, and all your identities, he's like, uh, that was that really hit home for us and that really hit home for me and that helped me experience what people might go through and so it helps me understand how to change and so i i think that's the biggest thing um as you as you know with the book brian there's a lot of i did a lot of research but i paired that with personal experiences um and so I, I think that um, I also I thought the research was good because I curated it in a way. But what I'm finding is that it's the stories that are resonating and people see either seeing themselves in in my shoes and seeing that happen and being able to empathize and feel with me, um, or people that are opposite of me, seeing those stories and saying, "Wait, wow, yeah, are we doing this?" And if we are, we, we really have to understand this and connect to it. Well, and thank you for being vulnerable and sharing those stories. Uh, I, I can um, connect with and empathize with the vulnerability that comes with one, sharing those stories, but then the other is, because similarly, my book um, is going to share some of my personal stories. And mm -hmm. there's a bit of like, do I want this to be printed and published and it's yeah. going to sit on shelves and people, and I, I lose control mm -hmm. of that story. And I do want to, to share those stories and services I know is true for you, but it's, um, it's, uh, it's definitely vulnerable. So thank you for, for taking the step into that vulnerability. Uh, and I think that that is what I was, what I was fumbling through. And I, I just wanted to say, like, I appreciate you being vulnerable to say, Hey, I'm not sure I know what you're asking, Brian. And for me to acknowledge like, Hey, that was confusing uh, of how I was asking the question. Like, those are just human real moments that I, you know, I think, I think you and I have spent a lot of time being okay with those moments. Like, I don't, you know, neither one of us were like, Hey, this, this feels super uncomfortable now. This is just like, Hey, they're two humans who are trying to have a meaningful conversation. And sometimes we understand each other and sometimes we don't. So how do we create workplaces that allow that to happen um, and allow stories like the ones that you were you're, you're, that are you share in your book to, to be part of how we know each other in the workplace? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, in the spirit of the, that we wanna give people some time back, um, mm -hmm. I wanna just, uh, you know, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask you to come back with any final words in a, a minute, but for, for those people who uh, want to buy your book, um, uh, and want to connect with you? Where, where, where do we find the book? Where do we connect with you? What, you know, what are the, what are the links and things? Yeah, so you could go to uh, leadingbelowthesurface.com, um, and then it's got you can access it on Amazon, Bookshop, Barnes and Nobles, all those places. It's also if you're in Chicago, it's also it's um, it's in a few bookstores here and also nationally. So those are the places, the usual places. 
um, to find the book. And um, if you'd like to connect, I'm also on LinkedIn. I talk about the concepts from the book quite a bit. Um, and then um, I'm also on Instagram. And then you can also, if you're interested on leadingbelowthesurface.com, you can join our mailing list. And I also send out, we send out tips on how to live and lead below the surface. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Latanya. Um, and for me, if for those of you who are looking to connect with me, um, one of the best way to connect with me is on LinkedIn, uh, search for Brian McComick, and uh, I share um, a, a recurring uh, series of posts on representation matters and different ways for us to, uh, to think about uh, representation uh, in our workplaces. Uh, and of course, Hummingbird Humanity. Uh, we have a weekly newsletter that comes out every other Wednesday where we um, focus on um, how do we how do we create human centered workplace cultures. So Latanya, as we as we wrap up, um, any final words you'd like to share with those that are with us or watching later? No, I mean, I, I think make 2020 make 2022 a, a great year. And I think um, it's uh, just, I guess, don't be afraid to learn and adjust to what the future may bring. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. And so um, get your shots, as Brian said, and uh, keep on moving, keep others safe, wear your mask. I got my KN95s and just got to keep adjusting and, and creating uh, the environment that we want to be in. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Latanya, it's a pleasure to see you again. You Thank you for saying yes to our 2022 kickoff session of Hummingbird Hour. At Hummingbird, I was going to say Hummingbird for Humanity. That's the business. Mm -hmm. Hummingbird Hour is the series, the conversation series. So thank you for being with us today. Sure. And uh, for all of you with us watching, um, watching now or watching later, uh, thank you for spending time and, and letting us be of service. Uh, I know that I speak for Latanya and I both that we are committed to making the world better for everyone. And uh, hopefully you um, take away some, some tidbits or insights that are, are um, helpful for you as you go off, uh, go back into the the workplace into the world and to um and work with other work and live with other humans so thanks for being with us uh stay safe be well and have a great 2022 bye everyone <laughs>